Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another Facebook Live from behind the scenes in our animal health hospital space. Today, we're going to be doing an exam on a couple of our hatchling caiman lizards. So just want to do a few introductions before we start. My name is Dr. Matt. I'm a senior veterinarian here at the aquarium. And this is Kim Ralston. She's one of our aquarists up in the Amazon habitat area. So she'll be um, handling our adorable little lizards today. If you've tuned in previously, we uh, did an exam prior on one of our adult caiman lizards to share with you guys. And although we're currently closed to the public, our care continues behind the scenes and that's what we'll kind of go over today with you. I always like to start sharing some of the interesting adaptations that a lot of our animals have. That's what really gets me excited about working with some of these exotic creatures. So before we dive straight into our exam, we'll talk a little bit about caiman lizards and share some of those. The first thing, um, I'm big into scientific names. Oftentimes they'll tell you a little bit about the creatures. So their scientific name is Dracania guanensis. Dracania actually means female dragon. So we'll touch on a few things that almost make you think about mythical dragons. And one that you just saw is that tongue flick that came out. So caiman lizards are actually part of the tegu family black and white, gold, red tegus, and then caiman lizards. They have a forked tongue just like monitors because they're on the evolutionary tree actually more closely related to snakes. So just like snakes have a forked tongue, these guys do as well. And they use that tongue to kind of taste the air. They'll bring in scent particles in that little quick movement, bring it into the roof of their mouth and deposit them in what's known as the Jacobson's organ. And in a split second, they can determine whether they're smelling a predator, prey, you know, a, another caiman lizard, <clears throat> and determine all that in a split second, decide how to process that information. So that's, that's one of the ways that they're kind of very dragon-like. And then guanensis, is from Guiana, one of the countries in the northern portion of South America, and that's where the species was originally described back in the early 1800s and 1802. They do occur in other countries as well, down from Guiana, Brazil, Ecuador, Colombia, as well as Paraguay, where there's a different subspecies. They are semi-aquatic, which is one reason we have them here at the aquarium. It's a species where one of the first institutions to ever display this species and also the first one to captive breed it um, and hatch out eggs successful, successfully. They are egg layers. Some lizards will give live birth. And we do actually have some more eggs currently incubating at the aquarium. But these two hatched out about six months ago. So this is going to be their first exams here in the hospital. You may see throughout the exams they're a little more wily and that's because they're so young in the wild lots of things will be trying to eat them right now. Most of them do calm down very well. We do a lot of training with our lizards so the adult exam that you would have seen um, they, they actually make really good um, kind of encounter animals because they do calm down so well and they get used to handling and we'll do a lot of tactile training so that they're good for their blood draws and actually uh, participate pretty well in their exams. But these guys you'll see are a little bit younger, um, so tend to be a little wigglier for stuff. In the wild where they're from, I mentioned they're semi-aquatic. They tend to hang out in low branches over the water. If something spooks them, they dive right in. One of the cool features that they also have that you'll be able to see a little bit of is right now the eyes are both open, but they actually have a third eyelid that can close. Um, and they literally have these like little goggles for underwater so um, they can kind of close their eyes but still see when they're swimming underneath which helps them find prey and navigate. They also get the name caiman lizard because if we look at their tail here their tail is laterally compressed almost like a rudder so again like an alligator or caiman as he's showing you they can kind of move it side to side to help them swim through the water and they'll actually tuck their legs so that they're a little more streamlined. In the wild, what they're gonna eat is a variety of invertebrates. So one of the reasons they were initially difficult to kind of uh, figure out their husbandry in an aquarium is their diet. So in the wild, they eat apple snails, which are one of the largest snails in the freshwater snails in the world. Here at the aquarium, we feed them a mixture of mystery snails, fish, shrimp, as well as a, um, a processed diet. 
to make sure that we're meeting all the requirements. And so one of the things we'll show you a little bit later is we took x-rays on this guy. Um, they have a very unique teeth structure that allows them to actually crush these snail shells and then they pretty much will spit out most of the shell and just swallow the soft, soft spot of the snail inside the escargot, if you will. But their teeth are really cool and that's one of the reasons why in general lizards are so successful is they have very strong jaw muscles so I'm not going to demonstrate how strong those are today hopefully um, but they're designed to kind of crush and grab and in general that's why lizards are so well evolved and are found on all um, six of the seven continents because they're very good at what they do. Another thing before we start with the exam to kind of show you is you'll hear a lot about like the third eyelid in lizards and that's what's called the parietal eye and that's up here on the top. That's what allows them to kind of sense sunlight, help to regulate when they're basking. Um, <clears throat> and then here's another thing that another reason why they're called like caiman lizards is see these little scales here. They're actually like little pieces of armor and inside those scales are little bones called osteoderms. We also do see that in crocodilians like alligators or the caimans that we have up in the Amazon exhibit. So those are some more of their kind of really cool adaptations that they have. We'll jump in now to kind of do the rest of our exam and then I'll show you those x-rays. We have a question on social too. Um, Niall wants to know if they have true eyelids, that third eyelid, or a nictating membrane. Yeah, so the um, nictating membrane and the third eyelid actually are the same thing. Uh, in, in mammals like us, that is not clear. And so, you know, when we close our eyes, it's like a full eyelid. But on these guys, when they close it, um, they, they actually have that little nictating membrane that can kind of come up. And like I said, that's a pair of goggles almost so they can still see underwater. Crocodilians have that as well. So for their exam, we will look in their eyes just to make sure we don't see any scars or anything on their cornea. We check to make sure their lens look okay and there's no cataracts. In a young animal, we're not gonna expect to see anything like cataracts, but older animals, we might find that. For um, lifespan on these guys, they average about 10 years, but we do have some here that have greatly exceeded that. We do have one who's still um, on display up in the Amazon exhibit who's over 20 years old. So um, with proper care, they can live a lot longer. And then the other thing we we'll always look at is what's called their tympanum here. So they don't have open ear canals like we do or birds but this little um, tympanum here is actually a scale and they can still hear and sense vibrations through there, but it's not like a true ear. And then um, we'll take a feel just to make sure there's nothing that this guy or girl swallowed that's causing any problems. We also check for any lumps or masses in there. And then we're gonna look at their feet. Since um, these guys kind of live in various habitats we want them to be able to climb so they typically have pretty sharp little nails here that they can use to grip stuff you can see how long some of their nails are again to help grab those branches when they're climbing over the water <clears throat> down here we're going to look they're probably too young at this point but another sort of cool feature with caimans is some lizard species you can sex them by their femoral pores here you can you might be able to see these tiny little spots here. Um, it's not as reliable in caiman lizards. So what we look at is there's this little congregation here of scales. And if there's one big scale in the middle, which it looks like there is here, that tends to be female. And if there's like three scales, that tends to be male. Probably still too young to say for certain which way, but um, the fact that there's a bunch of little scales around that one would make me lean towards male. The other ways we'll tell once they get a little bit older is um, based off their head size. The males will get a wider head. It also tends to be a lot brighter red, and then their tail base tends to be fatter too. Uh, another thing to point out while we're doing this exam is some lizards will shed in one whole piece, same with snakes. Cayman lizards like to shed in chunks. So you can see here's the real pretty green coloration. 
right here where it's more brown is where it's shedding some skin. And then down here in the tail, you can see it's shedding a, a little bit more skin as well. So it just kind of peels right off and you can see the little scales there. Um, but everything looks great on this one's exam. We do often look at the skin just to make sure there's no issues there, that they're shedding properly. And I'll sometimes pick off a little bit just to look underneath that there's nothing hiding, you know, like parasites or mites or anything like that. So everything there looks great. And then the last part of the exam that I usually leave is to look in their mouth. Um, and he's actually gonna help us and I'm not gonna have to open anything. But those teeth are right here along the sides. And I'll show you what they look like on the x-rays. And then there's that forked tongue. You can see how it's just sitting right in there, coming out a little bit. And then on the roof of the mouth is the other thing we look at, um, which is up where that Jacobson's organ is up there. So. Everything there and there looks great. Um, Kim's going to get the next lizard out. And just want to reiterate again, my name's Dr. Matt here at the Shed Aquarium behind the scenes in the Animal Health Center. We're doing exams, six-month health checks on our Cayman lizard hatchlings that are up in our Amazon exhibit, Amazon Rising Habitat. And this is Kim Ralston, one of our aquarists who's helping us out with the exams. So we'll go over here real quick and I'll show you the radiographs we took a little earlier on that one we just finished examining. And then uh, we got a question about whether we trim their nails. Yeah, so we, we don't trim their nails here just because they do need to use them to climb. Yeah, so they can hold their breath underwater. Um, they can stay underwater for about five minutes at most. Um, usually they're just going under for quick swims before they surface. We'll see, I think it might have timed out. Well, we'll try and pull out those x-rays a little later. So I did want to kind of basically show you with their teeth. They're almost like a nutcracker of vice. So a lot of lizard teeth are more pointed like this for kind of grabbing prey. Um, whereas these guys have flattened teeth. They almost look like little squares in there. And again, that's for like crushing things like the snails. So um, again, when the, this little one can actually eat a snail like this big and he'll get it in there in his teeth kind of crush it like that, get the nice soft spot out, and then spit out all these shells. They can still sometimes swallow these shells and actually digest pieces of it. Um, and that's another good source of calcium for them is, is you know, eating one of these little pieces of shell. Made a little bit of a mess there. Um, <clears throat> so our next one, same thing, you're seeing that nice little tongue there, kind of tasting the air, it probably smells that snail that I just opened up there. Um, so we'll look at this one's eyes as well. And everything there checks out. You can kind of see how pretty their eyes are. They're kind of like a little hazel shade. And then here's some of those scales again that I mentioned along their head. So this coloration will get a lot brighter eventually in uh, the males. The females tend to stay about that color. And then here's our little tympanums. We usually check those. They can get like an inner ear infection. So um, if those look like swollen or if you like see something behind it, but those look nice and clear. This one, um, if you notice, is at a different point of shedding. So there's really only a few pieces of skin left here on the tail. So you get a better idea of how beautiful their coloration is. Um, and again, here's those nice little osteoderms down the side. And then we'll look at those feet just to make sure there's no problems. Some lizards, if they're having issues shedding, um, if you're keeping them too dry, you'll see the skin start to accumulate down here on the tips of their feet. Um, or at the tips of their tails. So we always check those spots to make sure there's no retained shed. And that looks fine, as I did on the previous one. We'll pull off a little bit of that skin just to look that it 
looks healthy, which it does. Um, so now we'll go ahead and feel this one's little abdomen. And then Lori wants to know how big they get. Yeah, good question. So these guys are still pretty small. The females will um, top out usually right about like five or six pounds. And then the females will be about that long, maybe about that wide. And the males, and this is like body length with the tail, as you can see here, their tail is like pretty much the same length as their entire body. And again, that's because they need that tail to swim. So um, all told, they're about, what, like three, four feet long. Um, and the males do tend to be a little bit bigger than the females. So I don't feel anything in her coelom. Um, I should mention that as well. So mammals have abdomens, but birds and reptiles have what's called coeloms because they actually don't have a diaphragm that separates the thorax from the abdomen. So everything's connected in here. So you see when these guys breathe, um, they actually have to use their muscles to help move air more. So you can see how the sides are kind of moving in and out to push the air out of their lungs. Um, everything else with the skin looks pretty good on this one. So if you want mind Kim flipping up, we'll take a look underneath as well. So down here, again, we're, we're just looking to see if we can tell what sex they are. So we're looking at these little tiny scales right there that are kind of white. And this one as well, I would early on lean towards male just because there's, especially on this side, there's like three little ones right there. Um, and then again, these are the pores that in other lizards you can use to tell males from females, but um, they're not reliable in caiman lizards. And then we'll look at those feet again. Some, some animals also can get sores on the bottom of their feet if they're on too abrasive a surface, but these feet all look fine. And then we also look at the coica here, uh, which is like the common opening where they're reproductive, urinary, and GI tract all empty. Um, we check that for any swelling or buildup, and that all looks fine. Tail is another spot you can look at to make sure an animal's uh, good body condition. So we want to make sure not too thin, not too heavy. And then we also check here at the pelvis, and that all looks pretty good. These lizards have been eating well and, and growing well on their own. So um, that's basically what's involved in, in our physical exams. Um, we look at this mouth at the end one more time. And again, we have another very compliant patient. So we're checking the gums, which look nice and healthy and pink. Their teeth are hiding right there. There's their little baby teeth for crushing those snails. You can see them just peeking out the gums. Tongue looks great. And then we'll look in the roof of the mouth there and everything looks pretty normal as well. So we'll also weigh them while they're here today. Um, we take those x-rays that I mentioned and then we typically get a blood sample just to make sure everything's okay. Blood is a question that I get a lot for lizards. So the spots that we'll actually use to get blood on these guys is actually their tail vein, or they have a jugular vein that runs from their little tympanum here, um, kind of down along their neck. So those are the two spots that we tend to get blood on them. And, and that's just to make sure there's no infection, that all their organs are working properly and their electrolytes look good. So um, thanks again for tuning in today with us in the animal health hospital behind the scenes. We showed you guys a couple exams on two of our hatchling caiman lizards who are now six months old and were hatched behind the scenes. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to post them on Facebook and just want to remind people that although we're closed currently to the public, we're open virtually. So we have a lot of virtual encounter opportunities online. You can come meet one of our sea otters or the famous Wellington, the rock hopper penguin and lots of other opportunities for you guys to still stay connected with us on social media and you'll hopefully see more of these videos forthcoming. Thanks guys!